This evening we'll look at Mark chapter 14, verses 21 to 25, as Jesus says, I tell you the truth, I will not drink this cup with you again until I drink it anew with you in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus calls us to look at the history of God's salvation, look at the present at the Lord's table, and look to the future at the coming messianic banquet in heaven. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours tonight from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. From Mark chapter 14, verses 22 to 25. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. I tell you the truth, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. So far the text this evening. It took three years to complete and today it's one of the most memorable, most popular, best loved pieces of art in the world. You can find the image of this piece of art on carpets, on pictures, on t-shirts even. It seems to be everywhere and everybody loves it. If with uh, lifelike facial expressions on it that effectively depict the emotions of the people more dramatically than any period piece of that time, you can see the faces of everyone around that table. The 15 by 29 foot painting became an instant masterpiece of design and characterization and the painting, of course, is the one that we call the Last Supper. Did you know that basically from the time it was painted in the year 1400, in 98 it began to fall apart? Leonardo da Vinci, always the inventor, tried something new. Usually people painted on wet plaster, but da Vinci thought he would try a new turn and painted it on dry plaster. It was excellent for the media that he wanted to portray. However, the problem with dry plaster he later found out was about the time that he finished painting his masterpiece. It began to flake off the wall. And from the time that it was painted, it has been in constant restoration. And so the durability has not been really good. In fact, the Last Supper really isn't so lasting. This evening, tonight, is Monday, Thursday. It's a special evening. It's the first evening in Holy Week where we get together and worship. And we transport ourselves tonight far into the past, back to the time of Jesus. You can imagine the disciples gathering around that table in the upper room. In fact, Jesus said to his disciples that night, I have been anxious to celebrate this Passover with you. There they gathered, and in typical fashion, over four large cups of wine, they celebrated the events of God's salvation, of God's redemption and deliverance for the people of Israel from the land of Egypt. During that night, they remember God who demanded or, or decreed that lambs should be slaughtered and their blood painted on the doorposts of the homes so that when they entered the house through the blood of the lamb, the angel of death that would descend on Egypt would pass over their house. They got together in families. They got together with neighbors. They gathered together to celebrate this as one family. The people of God. And that's what Jesus does tonight too. 
drawing the family together around that Passover table. Of course, there's more to the story. They would be discussions about how God, with a powerful hand and an outstretched arm, would lead the people out with a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And the children would sit wide-eyed as they listened to how God opened the sea before them and the people of God passed through safely on dry ground. And their pursuers were crushed when the walls of water overtook them and washed them away to sea. Jesus at that meal would take the basic menu item of unleavened bread and there he would take and break that bread and pass it out and he would say take eat this is my body and on the third cup of wine he would pass that out as well and he would say to them take this and drink it this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. And they would eat, and they would drink. And Jesus that night would do something amazing. He would fulfill the covenant that God had made with his people. For his blood was being outpoured for the sins of the world. In fact, that night he would say, I tell you the truth, I will not drink this fruit of the vine again until I drink it anew with you in the kingdom of God. He and we still today gather around that table to celebrate, but he took what was familiar and he gave that special night a very extra special meaning, an extra special meaning for you and I tonight. This is my body. This is my blood. They wanted, sitting around that table, no doubt, for that supper to last. But that last supper was not to last as long as they would hope. Jesus was eager to celebrate this meal with them, this last Passover, but he did not want it to last forever. In fact, he knew that in fact it could not last because already one who was seated at the table with him would now go out and betray him. And all of the events of our salvation were now being set into place. You can imagine that night. You already know the end of the story. The disciples are living it as they go through it. Jesus invites them to look back. And he invites us to look back as well. To look back at the table tonight to drink this cup and to eat this bread in remembrance of him, of his crucifixion, of his death for you and me, for our sins. Because you see, if we were actually to take the stethoscope, that spiritual stethoscope, and put it to our hearts, our diagnosis would be sin. For we are continually sinning. And if we were honest with ourselves and saw that in the light of the law, we would have to say, altogether, I deserve nothing more than death. Physical death, spiritual death, eternal death, and all the punishment that God has in mind for me, apart from Christ. But that's the thing, isn't it? By faith, through the gift of the power that comes through the word of God, we are not alone. We are not without faith. For God has given us that gift. Jesus also wants us to look inward and see that sin tonight. 
And then, as we come to the table, Jesus asks us to look around, to appreciate the blessing of unity that we share. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and chapter 11 reminds us that as we are one body and we eat one bread and drink one cup, there is that unity that we share. That oneness of faith, that oneness of teaching, that oneness of confession. And we rejoice and we draw strength from one another as we look around the table tonight and we see others like ourselves gathering here to receive the blessings that Christ will offer. But there is even more than that tonight, isn't there? We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf, St. Paul writes, but above all, above everything, looking back, above looking in, above looking around, as we come to the table and leave the table, our Savior tonight invites us to look forward. To look forward. Because if there was no looking forward, this meal would be of no value to you or to me. But that little preposition, until. Until. He says, until he drinks it anew with them and with us in the kingdom of God. And I don't mean to downplay the importance of that meal tonight, and I don't want to downplay the tremendous benefit that we receive in it, but as Jesus testified his own words and promises, it is a miraculous meal. It is a meal that sustains faith and forgives sins and draws people closer in communion with God and with one another for the strengthening of our faith. And there we find that forgiveness of sins in the gospel of Christ tonight. He gave us his body and blood, but he also sets for us reservations. What kind of reservations? The best kind. For he has reserved for you and for me this night a place at the great banquet in heaven where all of God's people will gather. That wonderful banquet that he himself will preside at, as once he here presided over that last supper, now he will provide a lasting supper for all of the children of God who will gather with him in his kingdom. A supper that will last forever. What that heavenly banquet looks like, what it feels like, what it tastes like, what it's going to be, I don't know. God is not clear in Scripture, but it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be new. It's going to have a new quality to it. It's going to be something like you've never experienced before. It'll be marvelous. No longer will we have to look in and examine ourselves because you and I, by faith, in the Son of God, now fulfilled in heaven, will be made complete in holiness, for we will be with God. We'll no longer need to look around, because we will share the feast with everybody who believes in Jesus. No longer will be there that sense of sadness or separation that divides Christians today because of belief in doctrine and confession. There in the kingdom of God, a single unity will be fulfilled and we will be there together to receive all that God would have us to receive. No longer Will Jesus gather with us sacramentally? There'll be no need for that because we will see him face to face and he will be there in person. No longer will we need to look ahead as we do tonight, gathering around that word until, because what is now the future tense in Jesus' words will be the present tense the present reality, for we, you and I, will be there with Jesus together. It'll be breathtaking.
It'll be filled with beauty. It'll be filled with joy. It'll be filled with life unending. It will be the lasting supper, not the last supper. And that's why at the Lamb's high feast, we sing praise to our victorious King who has washed us in the tide flowing from his pierced side. Alleluia. Amen. If you'd like to hear more on this or any other topic, please find us on the web at emmanuelnrh.net. Please join us for worship Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., Bible class and Sunday school at 10.30 a.m.